Hello, Croissant. Welcome to Cricket Wales Conversations with me, Jason Mohammed. A series of conversations capturing stories and insight from people involved in cricket in Wales to help shape what the cricket experience feels like at its best in Wales. In this episode, we discuss diversity within teams and how cricket is and should be a game for everyone. Joining me for that discussion was Adnan Hadidi, a player and the South East Wales Cricket League Secretary. Aisha Rauf is a coach and the women's and girls coordinator at Tlandaf Cricket Club. And Paul Crane, the groundskeeper and vice chairman at Anistawa Cricket Club. Now, I found it particularly interesting that Adnan, Aisha and Paul had varying experiences of the enthusiasm and excitement on the pitch. And that can be so enjoyable, but also sometimes escalate and spoil the game for everyone. So here comes the podcast. Enjoy. Moin hauch. Uh, very good to see you, Adnan, Aisha and Paul. Thank you all very much indeed for being on the podcast today. It's really lovely to see you. And a lovely day as well, isn't it? It is. No, <laughs> being at Safari Gardens on a day like today. Feels like a cricketing day as well. Um, let me start with you then, Adnan, if I can. And just ask you, if I was to say to you, right, what's the state of cricket in Wales at the moment, Adnan? What would you say? I think um, cricket as an overall is, is, is in a quite good place. Um, I think it's growing um in terms of its programs uh through all stars and dynamos so a lot of new children who haven't really picked up the game are starting you, you'll see many clubs uh they're increasing their numbers through all stars and dynamos which then filters into their club um the women's game is doing great it's fantastic at the moment um so many nice pictures i actually managed to umpire a game as well uh last summer uh, a ladies game and it was yeah just really great um gives women a chance to take up something new socialize and i think the men's game is in a pretty good place as well at the moment yeah aisha hello do you share that yeah so my perspective i would come from the women and girls side because that's w- w- what what i deal with predominantly and i would say that for me at the moment it does seem like cricket is a game for everyone because you see women you see girls boys you know I watch men men's games as well so it really is has become like a a family a a game for all the family not just for the dads not just for the sons it's for everyone everyone can play because it was wasn't it Paul hello nice to see you it was wasn't it at one stage in our lives it was very much a game for the dads Uh, and and that's the comment I was going to make I echo the comments that have been said so far I think Cricket Wales has played a huge part the communication that comes from the top, covering the whole of Wales, the big picture is a great success. It is a great success. Um, It's easy to say all-stars, dynamos, women's cricket, um, ethnic minority groups that, you know, I think cricket brings people together. It's how we do that. Uh, The big picture is great. It's how we get that throughout all the clubs um, so that everyone can enjoy it uh, is the next step in my view. We're painting a very rosy picture here, Aisha. So is it too rosy a picture we're painting here? Are there challenges? Uh, there, I mean, we haven't come across huge challenges, but I would say it's it's a continuous learning curve and we have to keep educating ourselves on how to be in different groups or how to adapt um, because there are I mean every, it's so diverse now um, so I think it's I wouldn't say it's um, I've, I've had any huge issues but we have had a few obstacles along the way yeah 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 uh, and I'm going to come to you Adnan because you're the South East Wales Cricket League Secretary so you oversee admin in a very large league and you see many of the disciplinary issues that arise okay so we've celebrated the fact that cricket's in a good place in Wales however you probably see it on a weekly basis there are issues that arise on the pitch just go through a few things that happen on a pitch I think um some of those issues that you touched on, they start from, I think, understanding laws and 
uh, rules of cricket and I think as well as something called spirit of cricket. So, you know, um, I think that's quite huge in cricket, uh, playing cricket in the right spirit. And if you were to get, let's say, for example, an edge and there's no neutral umpires, I think batsmen have to take that responsibility and walk. And what we're finding um, more and more is issues, especially discipline, starting to arise from umpiring decisions where there's no neutral umpires and then what that ends up doing is spoiling uh, the day you know um, each match could last between six and seven hours and sometimes you know I've, I, and I took from my own personal experience as well it's not a pleasant environment to be in when you know things are kicking off let's say can it spill over then so it could be about an edge it yeah. could be about an lbw decision yeah. or a run out yeah. and then it can then spill into something yeah. really ugly yeah and um i think it's um it's common knowledge that you know an incident something like that kicked, uh, happened last year as well um which then results in you know newspapers getting involved it, um and then Lots of time over disciplinaries, um, and at the end of the day, then cricket suffers. You know, because mm, um, you want to enjoy it, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. we're all we're all in the game to enjoy it. Exactly. Aisha, would you share that with Adnan? Have you seen situations where there's been a silly umpire decision, and then suddenly it's descended into kind of problems? Not really, because I think because we're women playing at the moment because that's my my only experience is playing um with women um and I and I, and in the matches so we haven't really come across that type of behavior yet mm. so this is a problem for the men's game then by the sound of it that's yeah, yeah. or we just haven't experienced yeah right. yeah. The, yeah also um yeah. with the ladies all starting at a similar time uh, like their opposition as well um there's more encouragement, I find, in the, within the women's. So um, they're supporting each other. So, o opposition teams. So there's teams. a lot of support. So, yeah. so what we're saying is there's a tension here then, Paul, isn't there? In in male cricket. Is it a is it an ego thing, do you uh, think? Uh, I just would give a little different perspective. I, I think, uh, well, I know that the, the, the players' conduct uh, and how the ECB would like players to, to act, you know, is part of cricket at all levels, recreation or another. Mm. Um, I think there's a greater focus on on how to behave. I, I'm going back in, in in my day, you know, the level of the level of um, magnifying particular issues would very often be sorted over a few drinks after the match. Okay, uh, I think it's right that we have standards. I think there. I think it's about time that respect for umpires you know as as we've seen in in rugby or you know would love to see players uh, appreciate the referee as in rugby doesn't happen in football we know that um, i'd like to see more of of that in cricket i'd like to see the umpires who are after all volunteers here they get a few pounds petrol money but i'd just like to say that's my decision you know Language, the language is something that needs to be tackled. People tend to feel comfortable swearing. Uh, it happens. Um, and and on, on occasions it's tolerated because we're talking about, in certain fixtures, very, very competitive sport. I've not seen huge amounts of it spilling out. And I don't think it's... Um, a massive issue. It's an issue that you just got to keep on top of, yeah. in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, so many sports are doing their very best, aren't they, to encourage good behaviour. Let me ask you, Adnan, if I can, and, and understand where I'm coming from here, when, given the fact that you are involved in the secretarial duties for the South East Wales uh, Cricket League, you know, we're here to make an improvement. Mm. That's the reason why we're doing the podcast, right? Is there a tension that exists between largely teams from South Asian backgrounds and teams from Welsh, white, working class backgrounds? Is there a tension? 
Can I briefly talk about my previous experience? Yeah, of course you can. <clears throat> yeah. Before coming to us. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm from London originally. Yeah. Um, and for about three or four years, I played in a team that was very much mixed. Um, so it was a few, a few, a few friends, including my brother as well, between the ages of 16 and 18. And the rest of the team were mainly white, almost 10 or 15 years older than us. And it was such a pleasant experience. So my experience of playing in a club, um, a mixed club, was was fantastic, great. Um, however, when I first came to Wales and I first started playing, I noticed then playing in a predominantly Asian team, I might have been viewed slightly differently. Um, and it might not have been as a result of my actions, but maybe because of the way some of my teammates played. Um, but I'm not going to criticise them because that's how they've played cricket throughout their life. And most of my teammates, uh, although they're coming towards the end of their career, they've played cricket overseas uh, because they've been, because they're, uh, they've migrated to the UK. So they're used to playing cricket a certain style overseas. Now they've brought that style here and I don't think it's gelled correct. And, and it wouldn't because if you're used to playing a certain way and then someone else is playing a different way, there's going to be a clash. Um, and it's just small minor things, you know. I think going back to your original question, which was, um, is there a... Is there a tension? Is yeah. there a tension? I'm just thinking uh, about, because obviously we don't want you to name specifics. No, no. Clearly, and, and no. you know you're not going to do that anyway. No. But in terms of when those reports come in where there yeah. have been... And please don't misunderstand yeah. me. I'm not looking for the, the headline yeah. because yeah. we're here to improve the yeah. game of cricket. But when there have been those incidents that have appeared, have have there been tensions because of where a team has come from? I would say it's the the tensions arise from a lack of understanding how a certain group of players play and their style. Mm. So I would say... Is that, like, too enthusiastic? 100%. Yeah? You've hit the nail on the head. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> we are sometimes a bit louder um, and more, like I said, enthusiastic, more excited. Um, and that might not rub off well. And I think that sort of friction then leads to um, tension. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes it spills over, sometimes it doesn't. Um but I think there, there needs to be an acceptance. Yeah. I think that uh, players from a South Asian background play a certain way. Yeah, Paul, I can see you nodding but your head there. Just uh, I almost repeat. I just want to add a couple of things. We, uh, my club set up um, uh, an Asian, although it's mixed, but an Asian midweek league. Mm -hmm. uh, and we host fixtures for six clubs uh, bangladesh pakistan indian a mixture and 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 um this is the second this will be the third season and you learn so much you learn so much i think education is a big thing you know our, our you can just picture our balcony full of old uh, um supporters let's say of the club typically british sit on the balcony and, and, and they've learned a lot. And they will say, what a fantastic game. Every ball, if it hits the pad, it's an appeal. <laughs> you know, would that agitate a diehard Welsh, you know, only appeal if, if, if it's in lines? Or, no, every time, every time. Uh, and, and, and the enthusiasm, the way the T20 cricket is played, you see it on TV in, in the Asian leagues. They're smashing the ball from the word go. Now, that's not correct in the type of cricket that Brits have played over yeah. the years. Yeah. You know, the Jeff Boycott type approach versus, you know, Gavaska hitting the ball from... So it, it, it's a lot of misunderstanding, a, a lot of misunderstanding, but so enjoy. Once you've been involved, umpired, you know, umpired, um, uh, I just think it's a learning experience. Yeah. Yes, I... Very often in 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 the uh, Premier Leagues, 
the frustration is because very often the Asian guys who are playing are far better and they are particular. So the frustration is flipping heck. You know, he's playing shots, you know, that, that, that people have not seen before. Flick off the wrist, you know, reverse sweeps. You know, it's, it's a different level. Mm. And so you have to respect that. You have to respect that. Um, but I just, I would just like to echo one comment. It's, it's, there's still a lot of learning, still a lot of learning. And, and I just give one experience. We, 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 we um, host every Saturday morning a, a typically Indian society from Astrakhan Weiss. They, they, they use our nets 10 till 12 throughout the winter. And then what I noticed was, was and, and, and when they're in the nets, you just have to stand at the door and listen to the excitement, okay? And they welcomed two young boys from Afghanistan, okay? And, and these are really nervous, really nervous refugees. And they were brought, you know, they said, in, you know, when, 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 as a refugee, they came to the net. And you know, we talk about shaking, these boys, 18, shaking, okay? So they go into the hall, they're welcome, still nervous because they didn't know these these guys. But the minute the cricket ball was in their hand and they were playing for two hours, you would not have recognized them. And that's why I think we've all got to learn to, to welcome and communicate um, and understand. And, and you, know, you ask the question, uh, yes, there, there are tensions, but typically because of don't understand the culture. Understand. Really well said. It's a great point. And it's something that cricket can do in enhancing communities, Aisha. It sounds to me, judging by what Adnan and Paul have said there, we're all on a journey together, right? Yeah. Definitely. And we're all looking to make the game of cricket enjoyable because we're spending a lot of time with each other on a Saturday or Sunday or a Tuesday, Wednesday night. And let's just enjoy the game, Aisha. And that's something that, as you've correctly said, and I've seen on social media, Adnan, you've seen, said about the pictures. I look at the pictures of the women's game in Wales, especially, and everyone seems to be having a great time. I've played cricket. I've been playing cricket since I was 12 years old. And I've been having fun on a cricket pitch, but I've also seen it when it's spilt over. And it's ugly, Aisha, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, the experience we've had about um, the excitement of playing, like what Adnan was saying, how, you know, like when um, teams play and they get like overexcited, our team are like that. We're the loud ones. Um, we get, we cheer from the sidelines. And the other clubs that we go to, they actually comment back to us after and they say, oh, your, your team is so friendly. You're, and so it's, it's a completely different perspective. It's like uh, we get really positive feedback. You're so friendly. Um, you're so, um, you know, you actually cheer. You know, um, it's fun. You make it fun. And I think that's maybe the, the why I've had different experience from what Paul and Adnan are saying about playing um, with, with women and uh, going to other uh, other clubs as well I think women are embracing it in a different way yeah and we're, we've started that journey a lot of us have started that journey together so we're kind of supporting each other we're like we're you know wherever we go we're trying to support each other we're still making friends even though we're we're, we're so some of us are so different yeah we're probably one of the most diverse teams uh, land of cricket club but uh, we've made friends with um, other clubs and they've embraced us we've embraced them and it's, it's, actually, it's actually been really nice. But how lovely is that, though? You know, Paul, you want to make the game more diverse, obviously, and your club as well. Aisha, you're doing it already. Adnan, you as well. So I want to touch on talent, if I can, because, Paul, there are some fantastic cricketers around Wales. Would you say at the moment they're being given the opportunity to show Glamorgan, to show England and the selectors in the men and women's game what they can do? And can Cricket Wales do more? I think that's a great question because I'm not sure we're there with that yet. We're getting there. I think Cricket Wales is, is tackling it. But throughout the Premier Leagues, I don't think we see the players coming through that aspect. You know, I see junior cricketers uh, within Cricket Wales. We've got the Wales National Counties. But I'd like to see that the Premier Leagues 
recognised and those players coming through. I'm not quite sure where they're yet. Yeah. Aisha, do you think that we've got the right structure in place to find the next superstar when it comes to cricket in the women and men's game? To be honest, I don't think I'm the best person to ask that question to. I think, to me, it seems like everything's in place. Um, I could agree with what you said, Paul. Like, you know, like, Wales is so big. Um, and can Cricket Wales manage... Can, can, can Cricket Wales manage it? Geographically. Geographically, yeah. yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Adnan, do you think that we're in the right place when it comes to finding the next talent? Yeah, I think so. I've seen um, so many talented cricketers um, in the pathway and I've come across them whilst playing as well. Um, but I think um, why they can't make it to the next step, it's not something that I've got an answer for. Maybe if they had more experience playing in the subcontinent or just playing different types of bowlers maybe uh, or, or pitches so for example in Australia where you got a bit more bounce um, who knows if they could benefit from that but I, I haven't really got a, an answer for you so. yeah I suppose if we did have the answer <laughs> it'd be worth a lot of money wouldn't it yeah <laughs> <laughs> but one can only hope yeah. Yeah. that the next generation feel as if Paul the system will be in place yeah. is in place yeah. but also it comes from within as well doesn't it it comes from the desire to want to step up from the amateur game yeah. To oh, the professional no. game. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, 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 you know, we need some real life examples. We, we, we need to see more. We have some. We need to see more players playing for Glamorgan um, and coming through the system. Um, we have some great examples, but we need to see more. I think the Welsh people like to see Welsh players. And, yeah, and we do. You can't get away from that. No, absolutely. Uh, and, 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 you know, Glamorgan. Uh, to compete needs to bring players in Labu Shane from 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 Australia great example but but let's find the next Welsh Glamorgan Welsh speaking Glamorgan player why yeah. not yeah absolutely in 10 years time where would you like cricket to be what are the dreams hopes aspirations Adnan 10 years time your club any club in Wales recreational game yeah the yeah. game whatever 10 years time what's the dream what would you love to see I think um Going to a game knowing that you're going to feel welcomed um, by the opposition. Um, maybe enjoy a few laughs throughout the game, a bit of banter. <laughs> um, you know, maybe a bit of socialising after the game as well. Because um, I think that's quite key and that's maybe something, an area where maybe the South Asian community maybe doesn't do as often. And it is difficult, isn't it? It is. It, it yeah. is. Because yeah. um, I've got friends of mine who don't feel comfortable in no. a clubhouse environment. And my clubs, you know, <laughs> I think they're probably the most divided because you've got some uh, who don't and some who are prepared to stay for a soft drink. Um, but, you know, like with cricket, and if, especially if it's good weather, there's no reason why you can't be outside of the clubhouse and still enjoy soft drink and, um, socialize with the opposition um, but yeah just b bring back that enjoyment factor of cricket and you know having a laugh I think in t especially in terms of the recreational game enjoy the game isn't it yeah. Aisha 10 years time what's the dream for me I'd like to see um, more, more women from my community more South Asian women in cricket I would like to see more of our girls as well um, go through the pathway system, maybe play professionally as well. I mean, I feel like we're, we're getting there. We, we, we're supporting them, but I, I, I would like to see maybe some more established players. Um, for us, I, we'd love to see our, our, our clubhouse. We're our, at the moment, um, we're in the process of uh, um, developing a new clubhouse. So Where is that? That's in uh, Lander Fields. I know it, yeah. 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 That has been an, a long-standing, ongoing battle, um, which Adnan could tell you more about. Um, but so <coughs> that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to, or I'd like to see uh, some mixed women's teams as well for us to go out to different uh, towns um, in uh, outside of Cardiff. Um, I think it's just enjoying the game, being together, 
remembering why we're there for the fun, for the spirit of cricket. Um, and, and supporting each other. Yeah, how yeah. lovely is that? Yeah, that's what we're all in it for, isn't it, Paul? Yeah, sport, I, I, end of the day. And it could be any sport, but, you know, in the recreational game, I, this is the one point I just wanted to leave today, is is that we, we're just not going to be able to achieve very many of our goals at club level if we really don't get the number of volunteers. Because it's all very well saying we've got 10 junior teams and a hundred all stars and dynamos and but if you haven't got the bodies to support that you're going to fail and 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 i think that's going to be a key drive for my club and as tower in swansea valley you know we 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 love bringing um um cricket to the community but it's always a challenge always a challenge to get the number of uh, parents volunteers, past players, past players, number of past players who say, thank you for that, I'm going to go and play golf or something, you know. And uh, then they disappear. And they just just, just disappear. And, and that's my biggest personal frustration. But uh, for now, you know, we're doing really well. And in 10 years, we hope we'll be doing just as well and a lot more people from diverse backgrounds uh, enjoying the sport. It's a great sport. It really is a great sport. It is a great sport. I too appeal for everything. <laughs> <laughs> and Aisha, you just want to add on volunteers. I wanted to say that um, in, or, in order to grow the club, we, we need volunteers. We need people to help. We need parents. We need um, players who've uh, left the club, gone on to do other stuff. Um, we need, we'd like to recruit more coaches as well. I mean, it is, it's a commitment, but that's the only way that clubs are going to grow. Uh, thank you so much. You've been brilliant. Thank you. So honest, so refreshing. And thank you as well for everything that you're doing to improve people's lives and give them enjoyment through this fantastic sport of cricket. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Adnan, thank Aisha, you. Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My thanks to all my guests. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Cricket Wales Conversations as much as I did. Now, we tackled some very important issues and heard real stories from the cricket community here in Wales. We know we're in a good place, but there is still also plenty of work for us to do. And Cricket Wales are here to help. If you need any help with anything from establishing or building your club to engaging people from all backgrounds, I encourage you to get in touch with Cricket Wales for assistance, information and funding. Don't forget you can watch and listen to more conversations I've had with people from all aspects of the game in Wales, as well as how to secure funding for your club on the Cricket Wales website and social media. And we'd also like to hear your thoughts on these subjects, so please, please do get in touch with us. But from me, Jason Mohammed, for now, au revoir.